Live exposed busing. I forgot to turn the main breaker off. I could be blind right now. So you don't think that 120, 240 can hurt you. A lot of people see me in my hot suit and they think that it's way too much overkill. And there's been a couple of you who have read the comments and seen that I discussed how I blew my hand up a couple years back because I wasn't wearing the proper PPE. Well, I wanted to take a couple minutes and go over what happened two years ago. What sent me in an ambulance, in a helicopter, all the way to the burn clinic and an entire month's worth of work off. So let's get right into it. So I got a call from a customer who said that his panel was melting. Something was going on, he could smell burning. Uh, we showed up to the house and sure enough, that's what was happening. It looked something like this. This isn't the exact panel, but it did look like this. After I saw the panel like this, I should have immediately called the utility company. That was part of my inexperience working on residential panels. Most of my experience is in commercial and I was new to changing out residential panels. I should have called the utility. They have an emergency line. They could have come and shut the panel down right away so I could have done my work, but I did not call them and that was my fault. Basically what happened is I had been working 14 to 16 hour days, really long, really tired. I was exhausted. I was also at the same time trying to teach my apprentice Paul. So I'm walking through it with him. We start going through all the breakers, turning off the breakers, pulling the wires off the breakers, labeling every wire so that we knew what breaker to put it back onto. We took all of them off and then I went straight to taking all the breakers out of the panel. So now we had live exposed bussing. The panel was a really tall panel. All the bussing was exposed. And the one thing, can you guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to turn the main breaker off. The main breaker was way at the top of the panel. The one you see in the picture, the breaker's at the bottom, but it was opposite on the panel that we were working on. I don't have a picture of it, sorry about that. So basically what happened is I took all the breakers out, all the bussing was live. I didn't have any PPE on. I didn't have anything. I completely messed up. So I started taking the grounds and neutrals off, took them all out of there. The breakers were out. And then I loosened the lug for the ground wire that goes down to the ground rods. And I pulled the number four bear off and I went to shove it out the bottom of the panel. As I was shoving it out the bottom of the panel, it slipped out of my fingers and it crossed 240 volts. And it blew up right on my hand. It blew up and it looked just like this right after. As you can see, my hand is all charred. The skin was super tight. Everything had gotten burnt to a crisp and I couldn't even bend my hand. None of my fingers could bend. It was just, just imagine a burnt piece of toast is what my hand was. So we ran over really quick. I rushed, I was shaking. I ran over to the truck with Paul and we hopped into my truck and I was gonna drive myself to the hospital but I couldn't stop shaking. He thought it was a better idea for him to drive me to the hospital. So we got out of my truck, ran over to his, and I was just shaking really bad. At that point, I told him, I think it's best if we call 911 because I didn't know what the damage was. I didn't know if it had gone under my skin. I didn't know. So we got on the phone with 911. I hear the sirens coming and I'm actually in the driveway on the phone with another contractor because this homeowner, his mom was 90 and she couldn't be out of power for more than one day because she had medical devices in her house. So I called another contractor, friend of mine, he came over while I was on my way down to the hospital and he actually finished the panel upgrade. He's an amazing contractor, I love the guy. So as I'm waiting for 911 to show up, they're on the phone with us, they're asking us, is the panel off? So I rush over there really quick, still shaking go over there. I don't remember if the main breaker was on or off at that point. The ambulance showed up. They looked at my hand. They checked all my vitals. I was shaking still. They loaded me up in the ambulance. They drove me about two miles down the road to basically a, a parking lot is what it looked like. And I didn't understand what was going on. And then all of a sudden I heard the helicopter and they put me in a helicopter and flew me all the way down to downtown to the burn clinic. And I found out later that they don't mess around with electrical burns. They, don't, they didn't know if it had gone through me. They didn't know anything. I get to the top of the roof at the hospital. They bring me down to the trauma clinic. There's like 15 people around me. They're saying, right hand, no exit wound. Left hand, no exit wound. Right foot, no exit wound. Apparently they were looking to see where the electricity went in and out of me. And I stopped them and I said, hey, wh what are you guys talking about? And they said, 
where did it come out of you? Where did it go in you and where did it go out of you? And I said, no, no, no. It was just an arc flash on my hand. And they said, oh, okay. After that, everything kind of calmed down. Um, they were more worried that the electricity had gone through me and that it had burned through me. At that point, they sent me downstairs. After that, I was sent home and I was told to keep the burn completely wrapped. I had to put a cream on it every single day, two or three times a day, unwrap it, put more cream on, wrap it back up. It could never get the air is what they said. Do not let it dry out because it won't heal properly. So you can see again, this is what it looked like initially. Um, my hand was completely charred. After about a week or two, this is what it looked like. The skin completely separated from my hand. At this point, I was just waiting for all the skin to fall off. They said that this is what was gonna happen. It got charred, the skin bubbled off, basically a huge blister all over my hand, and then it fell off and it looked like this. At this point, I still had to keep cream on it all the time. I had to keep it wrapped up. Uh, a couple of my fingers actually went numb because I had the wrap around my hand all the way down my arm just to make sure that everything was completely covered. And then after that, this is what it looked like about three to four weeks in. It was finally healing up. Um, new skin was coming in. I was out of the woods, as you say. That's the story. That's what happened. 12240. I know that we might think sometimes that it's not that high of a voltage, but I'll tell you what, this was not fun. It was not fun at all. I was out of work for at least an entire month. The ambulance cost me 2,200 bucks. Hospital bill was 5,000 and the helicopter ride was $70,000. I own Landers Electric, so I don't have any sort of workman's comp. I do have insurance. So thankfully I was able to talk to the insurance company. Everything was covered basically, except for about 400 bucks, but that could have been a whole lot worse. And more than that, if the explosion had happened at my face, I could be blind right now. It's definitely not something to mess around with. I just wanted to share that with you guys and let you know, don't mess around with 12240. It can send a blast that will completely ruin your skin, mess you up, be out of work for a long time. I hope that that was informative and helps you to think twice before doing hot electrical work without uh, the proper PPE on. So if you haven't, if you got value out of this video, feel free to like and subscribe. If you'd like to see some videos on how to properly do an electrical panel upgrade with the power off, feel free to check out the videos right here. Thanks so much, we'll see you soon.